Swim, Swim, Sink by Jen Harney. One happy duck sits down to rest. Three tiny eggs, one twiggy nest. Three eggs hatch. Crack, crack, crack. Three tiny ducks. Quack, quack, quack. Three tiny ducks in one straight line. New happy flock, all feeling fine. Three tiny ducks jump right in. Splish, splish, splash. Swim, swim. Sink. Wait, what? Let's try that again. Three tiny ducks jump right in. Splish, splish, splash. Swim, swim. Sink. Huh, I didn't know ducks could sink. This is a problem. Ducks need to swim. And all of this sinking is ruining the rhyme. Maybe a quick running start and a great big jump. Or maybe not. How about a push from below? Water wings? State of the art scuba gear? Stilts to stay high and dry? A jet ski? Wait, they've got it. Let's try this again. Ahem. Three tiny ducks. Swim, swim, float. This clever duck used its shell as a boat. Quack, quack. Arr. Who ever heard of a duck that can't swim? This tiny duck couldn't do things quite the same way as everyone else, but he didn't let that stop him. He couldn't swim like the other ducks, so he had to get creative. He used the resources around him to design a whole new way to float. Let's make an origami boat. Start with a sheet of origami paper, which is a perfect square, and fold it in half diagonally, lining up the corners. Press down the fold and use your fingernails to crease it well. Open it up and repeat the same step on the other two corners. Match them up as perfectly as you can and fold the crease down to create the triangle again. These creased folds will be our guidelines. See how they cross perpendicular to each other, showing you the exact center of the square? and they divide the square into four smaller triangles. Use the guidelines to find the center point and fold each corner of the square over and crease it down, touching the point to the center. As you bring each corner to the center of the square, it should line up with the edge of the triangle next to it, but not overlap. Each time you fold the corner over, you are dividing the area of the larger triangles in half. So when you've folded all four corners over, your square will be half the size that it was before. Let's do the same step one more time. Fold each corner to the center point and crease it down. Do you feel that the paper is a little bit thicker now? Each time you fold, you are doubling the thickness. And each fold divides the area of one of the triangles in half. Try to match up the corners in the center as evenly as possible, but don't worry if they aren't perfect. It will still work. Make sure they're creased down really well. We'll need these guidelines in the next steps. Look how small the square is now. The area of this square is one quarter the size of the large square we started with. See the small triangles created by the guidelines? Open up the paper and count the triangles as you go. Before you open it, there are four. Then you'll count eight, 
and then 16. And the triangles around the outside edge are divided into two smaller triangles. OK, now it's time to put all those guidelines to good use. Fold each corner over, but this time not to the center. Fold it to the point where all the other guidelines cross nearest to the corner. Then use the crease that is already there to fold each edge over the corner. It's a little tricky, but just remember that you're not folding into the center this time. When all the sides are folded, it should look sort of like a picture frame. Now turn it over, keeping everything tucked in. Look for the guideline that divides this square horizontally. Fold over the top of the square horizontally to meet up with that line going through the center. Bring the edge right to the horizontal guideline and press it down. Then turn it over and do the same thing on the other side. Bring the top edge to the center guideline and press it down again. See how we've divided the area of the square in half? We've also made it into a rectangle. The top has two flaps sticking up in the middle and a triangle in each corner. And the back has a little pocket on each side. So make sure the top with the flaps is facing up. Fold each corner over, lining up the edge of the triangle with the edge of the center guideline. Try not to let the corners overlap each other. Just line up the edges next to each other on the guideline. Do the same thing on the other side, folding each corner into the center edge. Make sure they meet at the edge but don't overlap. Only a few more folds to go. Don't mix up the top and the bottom. The bottom has two little pockets and the top has four flaps. Look at the four triangular flaps. Each one has one corner that is not along the center line. Fold it over, making it meet with the edge of the center line. Repeat the same step on all four corners. All of the folds we did before created right angle triangles. But these triangles are different. They are a lot thinner. Two of the corners of these triangles will overlap slightly. That's OK. Do the same thing on the other side, folding over the edge and bringing it to the center line. Now we have this diamond shape. It still has two pockets on the bottom. Time for the last two folds. Bring the point of the overlapping corner into the center guideline. And do the same on the other side, lining up the point to the center. These folds are very thick, but just press them down. There's no need to crease them. This is the shape you'll have when that's finished. Does it look like a boat yet? Now it's time for the fun part. Fold the whole boat in half along the center line. And use your fingers to gently open it up. You should be able to see three flaps in the center. Pinch the outer two flaps and leave the center free. Hold the flap together with the fold on the other side. And then carefully turn your boat inside out. See the flaps opening up to form the bottom of the boat? Use your fingers to gently push out the pockets. Don't force the paper or it will rip. Keep going until all the angles are turned out and the bottom of the boat is smooth. Now your origami boat is ready. Hmm, I think there's one thing missing. A sail. Use a feather and stick it in one of the folds of the boat. Now your boat is ready for lots of adventures, just like Tiny Duck. For more information about receiving STEAM kits in the mail, visit the Kids and Families page at coosbaylibrary.org.